was the truth truck that Jim drove around regularly. That's him driving. Jim used to call me on the phone. Randy. He yelled me, Randy. Randy, it's me, Jim. Jim from Michigan. That's, that's <laughs> Deep, how we know grovelly <laughs> voice. That's how we know. Jim the sign guy. <laughs> For those who are in retirement or close to retirement, here's a man, 62 years old, gray-haired, wearing his oxygen tank, sitting in a chair, holding signs. You're never too old. You're never too old. You can be an effective witness. And the word witness is where we also get our word martyr. The most effective witnesses are those who are fearless and who are prepared to lay down their life if need be. And we pray that as Jim left this life, undoubtedly with the words, or rather with the name of our Savior on his lips, crying out to Jesus to receive him. We pray and we stand with him that the Lord heard his prayer and will grant him not only the crown of life, but a martyr's crown for his stand. May God inspire us by his example and not allow us to succumb to fear. Any questions? Sorry. Yes. You're saying that seeing the signs actually got you into the movement. Let, let, me, let me address that. When Eisenhower took the concentration camps, he told people, show the images of these dead victims. Show man's inhumanity to man so that it's not forgotten and so that it doesn't happen again, never again. We have to show these images. It's a part of our duty. And there are some well-meaning and horribly misguided pro-life leaders, or I should say, pro-life pontificators who say that the images are counterproductive. They're not counterproductive. They are one of our most formidable weapons. And whether it's through fear of hostility to our person or fear of bad press or fear of a bad reaction, if we lay down this formidable weapon, the truth of these images, we ensure our own defeat. We can't win without them. Those who suggest that we should not use them are unwittingly aiding and abetting the enemy. Oh, they say, but there are women who have had abortions and it hurts their feelings. Yes, it probably does. And we should grieve for those women and we should ask God to have mercy upon them. But we cannot alter reality and, and refuse to show the truth for fear of offending even those who have participated in this horrible crime. It'd be like saying, well, you shouldn't show the victims of the Nazi Holocaust in Germany after the war because some of those Germans were involved in, in rounding up the, the Jews and they, they might be really hurt or offended because of their participation in the Holocaust. No. You show the truth because it's the truth. And if we were to eliminate bloody images, we would end up eliminating half of the icons of the Christian world. The central icon of the Christian faith is a murdered man hanging bloodied and beaten on a cross with a crown of thorns on his head. St. Sebastian has arrows poking out of his body. John the Baptist holds his own head in a charger in some of the icons. Icons are central to our faith, and icons of victims are also part of our faith. For me personally, uh, I was always a preacher of righteousness. From the pulpit, I cried out against the sins of America, unashamed. But until I saw the pictures of aborted babies, abortion was a word we debated. It was a term we argued about. But it wasn't until I seen those heads and those little arms and those little legs, that's when it went from, from rhetoric, from a word, and a term to the hellish reality that it is. It is the truth. And once people see an aborted child, what abortion does to a human being, they can't unsee it. They can't unsee it. It's the truth.
And we have to face the hard truth with the promise that if we know it, it will set us free. I want to just say, as a post-abort of woman myself, that um, the images are very, very, very important. They are our most powerful weapon because uh, most women don't really comprehend um, what abortion is. The word doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's institutionalized. And, and as um, Rusty Thomas just said, we, we talk about it and argue about it, but we have saved many babies through these images. Um, with the Face the Truth Tour, with the Genocide Awareness Project, the, wherever we go, the pictures allow other human beings who might be confused. As you know, the devil is a liar and a murderer and has been from the very beginning. And so women, I mean, it's, it's not coincidental. Women who go into Planned Parenthood are not shown the screen when the sonograms are done. And, and so many are told that it's not, not a baby. And so many believe. But if you've ever heard the women from Operation Outcry or Silent No More, or even, even myself, when they see the reality, it, yes, it's a horror. It, it's something that you live with the rest of your life. It's a terrible thing. But there is forgiveness. We have a God who is merciful, and he reads our hearts. But instead of hiding behind, you know, is it better to be more concerned about someone's feelings or are we really trying to save other human beings' lives? Women's lives are ruined. It is the ultimate exploitation of women. Abortion hurts a woman forever and it kills a child. So, I mean, it really is a lie from hell that we shouldn't use the pictures. And as Randall says, there are many well-meaning pro-lifers who say, oh no, and, and, and post-abortive women and organizations that are filled with post-abortive women. And I've had lots of arguments with them, but the images are our most powerful weapon and we must use them. We must show the truth of the, the slaughtering, absolute slaughtering of children. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that to an animal. I mean, you see these ads on TV uh, all the time about um, not killing animals, but w what about us human beings? What have we done for them? So um, I really do encourage using the pictures. Uh, the question is, uh, what about children who see these? The children really take their cue from their parents. And if their parents say this is a child that's been killed through abortion, uh, if, a, if a mother gets hysterical, the child will get hysterical and confused. But if, if a, a parent tells, this is a reality, it's legalized. You know, it's considered the same as having a tooth pulled. Why not show it? Why not talk about it? I think you do a terrible disservice to children not allowing them to be involved in this issue because, believe me, you know, they'll be, when they're 13 and if they're in public school, the nurse at the school is going to take them to Planned Parenthood, and they may have their first abortion. So knowledge is power. So, Rusty, would you like to? I'm the father of 13 children, and all my children have been raised in this battle against the culture of death. I have these signs in my shed of, of my home, and I will give you testimony after testimony of little children walking up to these graphic signs and saying this, Daddy, who hurt the baby? Who hurt the baby? These children have more honesty than PhDs. They see the self-evident truth and they know two things. That's a baby and that baby has been hurt and harmed. And as long as the parent affirms that truth in that child's soul, that child is not harmed. The child's soul is harmed when they know the self-evident truth and the parents disregard it by their hysteria. That's when a child's soul has been violated. 
I want to thank all of you for coming. If there's any questions that any of the media have after we're done, we would like to ask us privately. We'd be glad to talk with you. God bless you, and let's keep praying for Jim's repose and for his death to provide fruit and valor for the pro-life movement. Amen.